This is, this is a graph that I uh, put together for a paper that I presented last year. And it was basically a paper that uh, looked at the hypothesis that if we start putting stuff online, people won't come to our lectures anymore. And that's absolute rubbish. I mean, pe pe if you do put your stuff together well online and prepare properly for the lectures, then people do come to the lectures. But the point that came out of it was that I've been putting resources online for many years now, and I was I expecting my students to look at it prior to coming to my lecture so we could have a better engaged experience. And I found that students were coming. Uh, this stuff was out there. They were asking for it. It was out there. But they still looked like a bunch of stunned mullets, and they weren't really engaging with me. So I looked at this data, and even though there's a bit of a peak there before the actual lecture date, um, bear in mind this is a class of about 300 students. Some of those hits represent the same student looking at the site multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, it, it, it showed that probably about 30% of the class will look at the online material prior to coming to lecture. So this stuff was all up there, and there was an, an expectation on my part that they should actually be looking at it before they came to the lecture. After that, I took a bit of a different strategic approach. I decided, right, I'm going to give them some incentive. So with each bit of online material, uh, which was basically presenting the curriculum online, I put a small quiz worth 1% up there with it. And that quiz closed immediately before I gave my face-to-face -face lecture. And I found from that, I found a rather dramatic effect the students were still coming to the lectures in the same numbers, and they were coming armed with the questions, and we got a dialogue uh, happening. I'd rock up with a blank bit of paper and a pen, and I'd be running the, running the lecture basically just off the overhead projector and do, doing a lot of questions and answers. So it's a far more engaged experience. Um, now, with the online stuff, I needed a catalyst to bring everything together to keep a bit of a structure to it. So what I want to show you today is how I used um, Articulate Studio as that catalyst, if you like, that centrepiece of the learning module on my uni uh, to sort of coax students online and the integrated quiz, which shut off just before my face-to-face -face lecture. Hello, my name is Colin Castell, and this is a very short demonstration of how I produced some of my online material for my level one course, Design Graphics. I wanted my students to start coming to my lectures more prepared, <laughs> having looked at my online material. But I found that even though they were asking for online lectures, they weren't actually looking at anything prior to coming along. And the experiences were not as engaging and not as interactive as I wanted them to be. So I started to produce online lectures in this format with a short quiz at the end of each one. Those quizzes were on an adaptive release and they closed down immediately prior to our face-to-face -face sessions. As a consequence, I found that when my students did come to a face-to-face -face session, the sessions were far more engaging and both the students and myself got a lot more out of it. There's a couple of things to note about this presentation, first of all. Obviously there's narration, which probably isn't too different from using my media um, when you just simply record one of your lectures um, in the lecture theatre. But the other feature that this has that my media doesn't have is that each slide is navigatable. You can move forward, you can move backwards, and you can click to any slide that you want to. Now the software that's used to create this, um, in this particular instance, was Articulate, but you can also use software from Camtasia and from Adobe, and I dare say a number of other publishers as well for the same sort of effects. If you want to explain something to the student and you don't want to make a fool of yourself uh, by using an avatar, then of course you can just use the webcam from your computer. I'm just sat here at the moment with my laptop on my knees and I'm recording this now. And this can be quite handy if you actually want your students to see you explaining something. So it's clear that you can add a narration to each slide and you can also add a picture-in-picture -picture explanation whether that's by an avatar or just simply uh, your own face using the, the webcam as a computer. Uh, a few other things that this sort of software can typically do as well. I might skip ahead because... Uh, I'm the just using what's time. called a spotlight function here in Articulate to highlight that line. The other benefit of using this software as well is it's... Um, it's capable, particularly Camtasia, is capable of capturing images directly from your computer screen. So 
for me, when I teach engineering software, I can actually run through a problem on my computer screen, um, talk through the microphone. So I just put in the head there, so I think you get the idea. Students work from the previous year. So again, you can see how easy it is to, or how effective it is, should I say, it's not actually quite that easy, how effective it is to show exemplars of uh, previous students' work. So I have a few random objects on here, such as uh, an apple, a banana, a dog, mm -hmm. and a cat. And I just want you to remember the objects on this screen. And now to see how you go with this quiz. Okay, um, I've been dobbed into this. I have to run this quiz. Which object was marked with a cross? <laughs> the cat. All right. I'm going blind faith here. <laughs> 